This is the new Audi RS3, and it's a little bit like the Marvel superhero Deadpool because it's got similar markings. It's very agile, and even though it is a super hatch, it doesn't take itself too seriously. And in this video, I'm going to explain why by hooning a saloon version of this car around a drift circuit. I'm also going to talk you through the exterior and interior design. I'm going to take it for a drive on the road. I'm going to take it for a drive on a track. I'm also going to launch it in not ideal conditions to test how good the Quattro system is for giving a good 0 to 60 time in the wet but then i'm also going to launch it in perfect conditions to see how quick this car is from 0 to 60 and over the standing quarter mile in the dry and believe me this thing is going to set a new record so you better stick around for that anyway i'm matt watson and you're watching car wow and if you haven't done so already please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on that way you won't miss any videos on cool cars such as this new rs3 Let's start this review by talking about the engine. And yes, it's back once again, Audi's famous 2.5 litre five cylinder turbo driving all four wheels for a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox it has the same 400 horsepower as before however they've increased torque slightly to 500 newton meters apparently this car can now do 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds but will it will it will it you know i'm going to find out by launching it so stay tuned to this video because i'll be doing that later on if you've got a high performance engine you're going to need some high performance brakes and that's why the rs3 has the best brakes of any a3 so you have 375 millimeter discs at the front 310 at the back and here at the front you've got six piston calipers you can even get carbon ceramic brakes for this car then you have 380 millimeter discs at front anyway let's just see the performance of these steels okay let's do a brake test from 60 miles an hour see how long it takes this car to stop let's find out here we go whoa yeah that is real good 31 meters is impressive here at the front the audi rs3 gets a redesigned nose it's got this huge black grille with your rs badging there bigger air intakes and they are real intakes no fakery here oh actually of course there is it's an Audi. there's gonna be some fakery somewhere this this vent is that no that does nothing here at the side, you have 19 inch alloy wheels as standard. You can have five spoke design or 10 spoke design. You've got red brake calipers, widened wheel arches over the standard A3. And oh, look, another vent, which, yeah, this one's real. Helps smooth airflow over the wheels, that. You've got some side skirts in black. You've got black door mirrors and blacked out rear windows. Yeah. Here at the back, you have a roof spoiler, an RS3 badge, blacked out Audi rings, a deeper rear bumper with this strange honeycomb effect then you've got a fake diffuser and some oval exhaust pipes like you should have on a proper rs car and has made some significant chassis upgrades for this new rs3 so compared to the standard a3 it's three centimeters wider at the front and one centimeter wider at the back the rs3 sits 10 millimeters low to the ground than the already sporty s3 and 25 millimeters low to the ground than the normal a3 it has specific stiffened rs sport suspension with three valve damping if you want that you can pay extra to get a adaptive dampers finally the rs3 gets a new rear differential now i'm going to go into more detail about it and what you can do with it a bit later on in this video but before that let's see what these chassis upgrades actually do to this car i'm going to test it on track is it better than the old one hopefully it is it wasn't awful the old one but it was a bit understeery this one with its clever diff should be a bit more agile and playful so let's see what we can do now i'm driving it on trofeo r tires and <laughs> hardcore track day tyres which are great in the dry but not so good in the wet so hmm, let's see how we get on hopefully I won't crash it oh you can feel it sliding and losing traction and I'll tell you what already this car is just more playful more agile it's actually more point as well the way it darts into the bends than the old one I'm actually seriously impressed by it already I'd love to try it in the dry <laughs> and then when you stamp on the throttle that rear differential does its job and really starts to drive the rear axle around <laughs> i've got the stability in sport setting so it's allowing a bit of slip but then it gathers you up if it starts to get a little bit too leery there you can just like hit the gas and it'll just <laughs> this is way more playful than before it really is they've done a great job on the handling i am impressed well then audi you've made your rs3 properly fun at last 
Here on the inside, you get some RS sport seats. These are in leather, you've got a honeycomb pattern on them, red stitching, some red accents, an RS logo there. They are comfy and they are supportive. You've also got a Quattro logo here on the dash because you've got four wheel drive and this carbon fiber effect trim, which I'm not too sure about. I do like the flat bottom steering wheel with the RS logo there. This one has an Alcantara covering to it and red stitching. You've also got some Alcantara on the door panels as well. The gear selector paddles, they're a bit bigger than in a standard Audi A3. Also, you've got some aluminium pedals, you've got RS floor mats, you've got RS on the sill as well. A little red ring around the stop start button because this is a performance car, obviously. And look, look at this, you can get like red stripes on the seat belts. I wanna show you this, finally, look. See these accents in the air vents? They're an optional extra. Now, I was speaking to someone at Audi and there's a bit of an argument internally between the product guys and the designers. The product guys wanted these because they can sell them and make more money from them. The designers didn't want them because they think they spoil the look of the car, make it look cheap. What do you think? Should these be allowed or not? I'll put a pinned comment below the video. Who was right, the designers or the product guys? Basically, do you like these vents or not? The back seat in the back of the RS3 is pretty much like a normal A3, so it's reasonably spacious, decent knee room and headroom. Though, of course, you do have the cool RS sport seats with a honeycomb pattern and some red stitching. One thing that's slightly annoying is this, though. Look, the wide front seats do block your view. You sit back here a little bit. Look. The boot capacity on the Audi RS3 is 281 litres, which is 100 litres less than on the normal A3. Part of the reason for that is that the five cylinder engine means that you have to have the battery in the boot, which takes up space. And then there's the fact that you've got the four wheel drive system also takes up space. So it's not quite as good for carrying luggage as a standard car. And that brings me on to five annoying things about this new RS3. I remember the days on my old RS4 when Audi's sport styles in RS mode was a lovely circular dart. Looked very, very nice. Then they switched to this weird design. Then I heard that for this new RS3, they had another design. So I got really excited until I found out what it was. Yeah, I'm gonna show you like that. And the revs come towards you, watch this. Oh, and there's a soft limiter. The revs coming towards you. What the f is that all about? This cup holder design isn't ideal on a very fast car such as this. So while you can fold these little bits out there to try to keep your drink a bit more secure, they don't hold it that tightly. Also, you're probably gonna to forget to do that and your passenger definitely is. So if someone puts a cup of coffee or a can in there or a bottle without the top on and you suddenly accelerate, the drink is going everywhere. How do I know? Well, you'll find out very shortly. These black wheels look really cool. However, they could be prone to stone chips because once you chip off some of the paint, it'll really show up. And that could be very bad if you take this car on track and have a little bit of a gravel trap moment. That's not all though. I'm not sure how easy it will be for your local alloy repair guy to fix these. It's a bit of a shame you can't get some more aggressive official styling upgrades for this car, such as a bigger wing and some winglets like you can on a Mercedes AMG A45S. If you want that sort of thing, you're probably gonna have to go aftermarket. And going aftermarket makes me feel a bit bleh, dirty. Anyway, let's move on to five cool things about this car. Let's do it. The unique thing about the RS3 compared to some other hot hatches is the fact that it gets a five cylinder engine. Have a listen to this. <laughs> I think it's all just got a bit jizzy. Better go clean myself up. Audi has fitted this car with something called a Modular Vehicle Dynamics Controller. Yeah. It's basically a computer that controls all the car's driving functions, such as the engine power, the gearbox, the four wheel drive system, the differential, the stability control. So they work in perfect harmony, so you can extract the maximum amount of fun out of this car. As with all other modern performance Audis, you now get an arse button for the RS3 and you can configure that using the driving mode selector and it allows you to quickly toggle to some pre-selected set of the car. For instance, you go into individual and then you can choose settings for things like the drive system, the suspension, the steering and the engine sound. Also, there's a new RS performance setting, which sets the car up for use on the Nürburgring. So full attack mode, but with softer suspension. That setup will probably be good on a challenging British back road as well. Arse oh, button, don't forget it. 
If you're a track day junkie, you'll be pleased to know that you can get this new Audi RS3 with optional Pirelli Trofeo R tyres. They're super sticky and almost slicks. Brilliant for hooning around a circuit in the dry. There's another new button on this car, look. RS Torque Rear. Oh yeah, this car is fitted with a similar clever electronically controlled rear differential as a Mercedes AMG A45S, which lets you do drifts. So 50% of the engine's torque can be sent to the rear axle, but then that torque can be distributed as needed across the rear axle by two electronically controlled clutch packs. And this is what it allows you to do in this car. Actually, I'm gonna switch into a saloon version because they don't want me to break this hatch. Oh, power, 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 oh yeah, yeah. It's not as easy as in a rear wheel drive car, but it can be done. Let's see if we can go the other way. I'm in an Audi RS3, doom, doom. And I'm trying to drift it carefully, doom, doom. Let's start off by seeing what the RS3 is like in town. Now, I'm actually in Greece, Athens in fact, and I'm going to see how well I can cope with the Athens traffic. I'm trying to make a dodgy lane change and see if the person in the BMW next to me will accommodate me or because I've got a bright red hot hatch, they're going to hate me. This could end badly, hopefully not in a punch up. Okay, lights have gone to green. Let's see if I can get in. London style, London style, London, hello. N no. Have you ever been let in by a BMW driver? Vote below. Oh, and now we have a motorcyclist on the wrong side of the road. Brilliant. So, what is this RS3 like to drive around town? Well, people aren't so likely to let you pull into gaps than they might do in some less in-your-face cars, but it's actually very easy to drive. Visibility is good, which is handy when you've got people on scooters just filtering like crazy. Also, the steering's quite light in town. I've got the suspension on this car set to the softest setting as well. So over bumps such as this, it's not too bad despite the sporty setup and the big wheels. The brakes, while powerful, they're not too jerky for when you're having to just shunt along in traffic. What's not quite so good though is the automatic gearbox. It's not as smooth as a normal torque converter automatic gearbox. It's just like easing you forward. It's a little bit more jerky when you're manoeuvring. Hopefully we'll be manoeuvring soon. What's going on ahead? Athens, rush hour. Great time to test a sporty car such as this. I think we need to go somewhere where we can drive it a little bit quicker. Now let's see what the RS3 is like on the motorway. So I'm just going to join the Greek motorway. I think that's a sign for speed cameras there. So I better not do this. Oh, that's enough of that. Don't want to break the speed limit. It's fine to accelerate hard onto a motorway, but you shouldn't be breaking any speed limits. And when you're not breaking a speed limit or accelerating fast onto a motorway, what is this? RS3 like just for cruising for long distances. Does its sporty nature just turn out to be a pain in the backside? Well, not in this case, no. This one's got the adaptive dampers, so it rides over bumps really well. It's reasonably quiet. It's only noisy when you want it to be. And the seats are rather comfy. And that's basically all you need to know about what it's like on the motorway. Oh, we're approaching a toll. So it looks like I've got another opportunity to accelerate in fact i'm going to go into arse mode i like behaving like an arse and now pin it oh no look what's happened <laughs> accelerated so fast show them lewis see i told you i told you that was a bad feature about this car cup holders aren't supportive enough that'll teach me for being in arse mode do you know what Accelerating hard away from a toll booth probably isn't the best place to test this car's launch capability. I think I need to go somewhere else for that. Okay, I'm back on track, hence the stupid helmet and stuff. Now it's time to launch the car. I wanna see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Audi says it'll do it in 3.8 seconds, but will it really? Well, I'm gonna find out with my specialist timing gear up here. It's got its work cut out for it, this car, because this track I can sing a rainbow is wet and one Pirelli Trofeo R tires, which are cold. <laughs> is it gonna launch? If it gets anywhere near 3.8, it's done a good job. So come on, let's find out. Let's go. That light just hooked 
3.85 and I'm literally driving on glass. Today is a new day, it's not raining, and I thought it only fair to see what this new RS3 can do from 0 to 60 in the dry, and when it's not on cold track tyres. <laughs> Actually, seeing as I'm on a closed road, I may as well also see how quick it'll do the selling quarter mile. Now for reference, I've got a 12.2 out of a 2017 Audi RS3. I've had a 12.1 out of a Mercedes MG A45S. I've had a 12 second dead from a BMW M2 CS. And I've also had a 12 second dead out of an Audi RS4. What will this new RS3 do? Let's find out. Sweet launch, 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. What's the quarter mile gonna be? Come on, can you do 12 seconds? <laughs> me, literally me sideways, backwards, up and down. It did a sub 12 second quicker than I've ever had out of an RS4. The RS3 is quicker. I'm so excited by that. Sorry for all the swearing. Sorry. 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 So then, what's my final verdict on the new Audi RS3? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon if you want the hardest accelerating hyperhatch, you should go right ahead and buy the new Audi RS3. It's as crazy as Deadpool. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you didn't, I don't like you. Let me know what you think of the RS3. Is it better than an A45S or an M2? Let me know in the comments. Click on those windows there for more videos and on that box there if you're thinking of selling your car because we can get a great price for your car for you. Check it out.